The last part of this lecture concerns how to find the electron configuration of a neutral atom. These are some instructions I have left in the notes in case you need to refer back to them, but I intend to explain to you how to do this by using examples. So let's start with bromine. If you wanted to get the electron configuration of bromine, we just need to start at the upper left of the periodic table and keep adding electrons and sublevels until we get to bromine. So I hope you're looking at your periodic table. Helium will, of course, be over on this side, but we recognize that helium has electrons in the s orbital. So this would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. That is how we could write the full electron configuration of bromine. That's a very long string, so it's more typical to go up and to the right and choose the noble gas and put it in square brackets. So we can say argon in square brackets instead of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So we start with argon and then just do the one row that leads to our element. The only confusing thing about this is that students need to remember that in the D block, they should take row number minus one. So although this is off period four, this is 3D. This would be 4D. This would be 5D. This would be 6D. And for the F sublevels, these start off row six. So this would be 4F, and anything in this area would be 5F. So this question asks, how many S, P, D, and F electrons are there in bromine? You could, of course, look at the previous slide and determine the electron configuration and count. I think it's easier to go in blocks. So let me go back to the previous slide. When I look at bromine, it's very easy for me to count how many electrons are being filled in an S block. As far as the P block goes, well, there's a row here, another row here, and one, two, three, four, five in this row to add up. For the D block, we pass through one time on our way to bromine and we do not pass through the F block. Bromine has an atomic number of 35, so a neutral bromine should have 35 electrons. That will also help you with your choices. This question asks, what are the N and L quantum numbers for the highest energy electron in bromine? Let's go back and look at that electron configuration. The last electron we place in bromine in the ground state is in a 4p orbital. So essentially, this question is, what are the n and l quantum numbers for a 4p orbital? This last question asks us, how many unpaired electrons are in bromine? Here are your steps. Determine the last sublevel to which the electrons are added. Okay, that would be the 4p. The next one, draw boxes or lines if you prefer, indicating the number of orbitals in the sublevel. How many bananas do you have in a p sublevel? I hope you're going to say three. Count the electrons in the sublevel. 
not a problem for this example, we're given five. So there are five electrons that we need to place. Last step, fill in the electrons according to Hund's rule. That's important because we need to spread them out and point them the same direction when you can, pair them when you must. When we're done with that, we can identify the number of unpaired electrons. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There is one unpaired electron. Now for this example, you would get the same answer if you did it the wrong way. If you went one, two, three, four, five. But there are other examples where doing it the incorrect way is going to give you the incorrect answer. This question asks, what is the electron configuration of cobalt? And of course we mean in the ground state. Don't forget, in your D block, you need to do N minus 1. This question asks, how many S, P, D, and F electrons are there in cobalt? Important reminder, don't forget that helium counts in your S electrons. What are the N and L quantum numbers for the highest energy electron in cobalt when it is in the ground state. So please get the electron configuration and then determine the quantum numbers for the highest energy electron. How many unpaired electrons are in cobalt? This one I feel like you might need a little bit of help. So notice that here is cobalt, and we are in the 3D row, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons. So we are looking at 3D7. D means we have a banana bunch of 5 bananas. So I would like you to place 7 electrons in the five orbitals and do not forget Hund's rule. Spread them out and point them the same direction when you can. Pair them when you must. Here's an example of what to do with electron configuration when you have an element that passes through the F block. So here is osmium, our example. We're going to start, of course, with xenon in brackets. Now, if we think about how the electrons go in, we know 6s2, 5d1, 4f14, and then we come back and put some more electrons in 5d orbitals. So if you wrote them out the way they were going into the orbitals, you might come up with this electron configuration. It is more traditional to group the electrons this way and put the d electrons together. Remember that if we take n plus l and compare 4f and 5d, technically 5d has the higher energy level. So I hope you're looking at your periodic table and ready to answer how many S, P, D, and F electrons are there in radium? This is atomic number 88. What are the N and L quantum numbers for the highest energy electron in radium? This would, of course, be in the ground state. And how many unpaired electrons are there? There are many elements that have irregular filling. I've given you some training on how to follow the pattern, but since the energy levels are very close together, the further you get out from the nucleus, 
sometimes there's irregularity. This is because pairing of electrons in the same orbital requires energy. So if you followed the pattern for chromium, you would go and fill the s orbital first and then put the remaining electrons in the 3d. Pairing these electrons in the 4s orbital costs more energy than promoting one electron to the 3d. So we're going to lower the total energy by unpairing the s electrons and promoting it to a slightly higher energy. So instead of 4s2, we move that electron up, and we're winding up with 4s1, 3d5. It's a lower energy to state to have all the electrons unpaired. Now this is a little more difficult to explain with copper. If we follow the pattern with copper, you wind up with 4s2, 3d9. It turns out that it is lower energy to take this electron and promote it to the 3d orbital, leaving the 4s orbital unpaired. Why is that lower energy in a ground state? Certainly there's a quantum mechanical explanation for this. I use the roommate explanation. If we look at the top diagram for copper, this is two roommates in a studio apartment seeing each other all the time, always within eyesight. If I look at the bottom example, instead we have a four-room apartment, and the two roommates are in a four-room apartment, so they have the opportunity to be in different lobes of the orbital. Well, which roommate situation is more comfortable for you? The bottom one, of course. And you will see these irregularities not only in the 3D, but the 4D, the 5D, the F blocks, because pairing electrons within the same orbital requires energy. Here's one last question that is asked in the homework and often in problem session and other venues. This asks, how many electrons can be stored in orbitals for which n is equal to 5? Well, if n is equal to 5, then L has values 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So that means we can have two electrons in a 5s orbital and six electrons in a 5p orbital and 10 electrons in a 5d orbital. If n is equal to 3, then we are talking about the 5f set of orbitals, and those hold 14 electrons. And if l is equal to 4, we are speaking of the 5g orbital, and that can hold 18 electrons. If you sum that together, you will wind up with 50 electrons. Now, granted, we don't know what this element is because we know of no elements thus far that have electrons in 5g sublevels, but that doesn't mean we can't find it someday or make it someday.